There are a few things I want to show you when it comes to your PowerPoint environment that you can customize. The first one is down below this orange bar, the status bar, and it gives us some stats and also some commands that we can click on. Like one is that the presentation is going to be in English, and if you don't want to see that on the status bar or remove some of these commands like notes, that when you click on it, adds the notes down below. You can type in the notes or speaker notes for that slide, and you can print those off later on and read from those speaker notes, one for each slide during the presentation which we'll cover in a later training video. Let's click on that to collapse that. In any case, to customize these commands or stats, right-click anywhere on the status bar, and whoa, everything is checked, except for the theme. So if you want to get rid of something, like the language, down below English, go ahead and uncheck it, and it's gone. Of course, you can check it to re-add it, but let me uncheck it and leave it alone, and click off. Next is you can customize your office theme, and up at the top it's this bland white, and that's not the default. You're probably used to the orange up at the top for the PowerPoint. And to customize that, we can go backstage and click on File, go down to Options, and up here, the General tab is selected by default. So just come down to the section called Personalize Your Copy of Microsoft Office, and it's not PowerPoint, it's Office. So whatever you do in this section here is going to update all the Office applications installed on your computer not just PowerPoint, but also Access, Excel, Outlook, and so on. So for the Office theme, the default, well, the one that I have set here is white, but if I change that to, ooh, colorful, you also get the other option, dark gray, all those different choices. Let's go ahead and select colorful and click OK, and there you go. Changed it, and that's colorful. Not only does it update it for PowerPoint, but again, all other Office applications like Excel. There you go, well, that's colorful, and vice versa. What I do in Excel to change this from File to Options, and come over here, there you go, personalize your copy of Microsoft Office on the General tab. You change the Office theme to White, click OK, dokie, Excel's back to White, close out. Hey, we're back to White in PowerPoint as well. Now, speaking of which, in that same section, let's go backstage again to File, down to Options, and there you go, General, and Personalize Your Copy. You've got your username and initials. Now you want to make sure you fill this in correctly with your name and initials, not the default, like if it's the name of the computer, like HP or Dell, whatever, because when it comes to the author, well, when you create a presentation, it's going to pull it from here, and you want your name to be the author, right? And also when it comes to adding comments to identify you, also when sharing your presentation with others, because, you know, when you add comments to a slide and you want to be able to add your thoughts and say, okay, this is what I want in this slide, and you hand it off to somebody else, and somebody else is reviewing it along with a bunch of other people, well, who's to say who said what? And we want to be able to tie those comments to the person, and it will use your initials like KK. Hey, that's Kirk Kershaw. Well, that's the initial, but then you'll get the details here in those comments as well. So make sure you update those, and then while we're here, let's come down below in the Startup Options. Now, if you don't have this checked, show the Start screen when the application starts. That means when you open up PowerPoint, it takes you right to what you see here, gives you one title slide to work with, and you can delete that if you don't want a title slide to begin your presentation. But if you do show the Start screen, you won't see this. It'll actually open up a Start screen that on the left-hand side will show you the recent files that you've been working in, like today, last week, or older. And then over to the right, in the main section, you'll have the option of creating a new presentation from a blank template or other templates. So let me show you. So right now I don't show the start screen when I open the application. So when I click Cancel and Close Out, and I open up PowerPoint, it doesn't go to that start screen. By default, it'll always open up, beginning with a generic name and a title slide. So if I go Backstage File, down to Options, to where we were, Again, the General tab, and come down below in the Startup Options, and check that I do want to see the Start screen. Click OK, dokey, Close Out. Then when I open it up, there you go. You get all the recent presentations, the ones like today, that I can click on, and they'll open it right up. Or I can come over here and just click on Blank Presentation, or use one of these templates, and you can scroll down and see a bunch of other fun templates. So if I click on Blank, it's just like bypassing the Startup screen. Because, you know, you get a title slide and that's all. In any case, let me go ahead and File to Options. And come over here and uncheck it. Let's see next, other ways to customize. How about saving? 
Now when you save it, you can have the option to not show the backstage when opening or saving files. What that means is that, for me, whenever I save my presentations for the first time, I'm going to save it to my computer. I'm not going to be saving it to the OneDrive or some server on the cloud, and so I don't want it to go backstage, for example. Right now, it doesn't go backstage. So if I click Okie dokie, and this is the first time I'm going to be saving this, because when you save it, it'll perform a save as, it'll force a save as, where it's going to ask you two questions. What name do you want to give it? Because, come on, presentation one, that's generic. What is that about? And then two, where do you want to save it? So when I come up here and click on save, it doesn't go backstage and ask me where do you want to save it, like the cloud or to your computer. It automatically opens up the save as window and it says, okay, where do you want to save this on your computer? So if I close out and I come backstage and I'm like, hey, you know, every time I save, I want it to go backstage. And then let's come up here and click save and say that we will uncheck this. And by unchecking it, it'll show us the backstage. Click okie dokie when I come up here and click on save and boom, takes me right to backstage and right to the save as because it's got to know what name we want to give it and where we want to put it. So there's the OneDrive if you want to save it to Microsoft's server there. Or if you want to click browse, it opens up the save as window so you can put it on your computer. I mean, whew, that's one too many clicks. I'd rather say that when it comes to saving on my computer, when I, well for me, I always save it on my computer, not the OneDrive, then let's bypass that. Come down here and click on options. Go to save and say, look, check the box, don't show the backstage, just go right to the save as option, let me save it on my computer. Save me an extra click or two. And then speaking of save, when it comes to saving, you can have a default file location, so when I click save, and it saves it to my computer, right now it's always going to point to the desktop. Well, what if I want all my presentations to be saved in the exercises folder on the desktop? So if you know the address, or the rules behind the address, where it starts with the C drive, user, the name of the user that you're logged in as, and then the desktop of that user, and on the desktop I have a folder called exercises. So when I go ahead and click okie dokie, and I click save, it opens up in the exercises folder that's on my desktop. When I click cancel, I say no, I want to save everything to my desktop. Click file, options, save, and then go ahead and delete that. And of course, if you have a folder within a folder, then you hit the backslash. And if I have a folder within the exercises folder that's called spiffy presentations, then of course type in spiffy presentations. So it goes and it opens up inside of that folder. But I want to save it to the desktop, so I got to get rid of all of that. Click OK. So when I click save, it's on the desktop. Oh, that's nice. Let me click cancel. And let's go back to file, down to options and then go to save and then you got the option to auto recover information or save your presentation automatically every 10 minutes and you can customize that and you can go down to one minute and so every minute when you're working in there automatically will save it for you so if you do a lot of work and something happens your computer gets shut down and it's not automatically saved oops so you can go ahead and have that save automatically every minute but keep in mind when you have it auto saving for you that the repeat option which is found up here on the quick access toolbar the moment you save it or automatically saves it it wipes it clean it clears it so when you perform an action and we'll talk about this in a later training video but when you perform an action and you want to repeat that action and not have to go through it again and select that action just say okay repeat 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 just click on the repeat button but that gets cleared out the moment you save it or the moment it automatically saves it every 10 minutes so if that repeat option is very important to you don't hit save, which is going to be hard because you may want to save it if you did a lot of work. Or just make sure that this autosave is set out long enough that it gives you a chance to go ahead and do the repeat option as many times before it hits save and clears this out. So right now, it's ready to repeat something. You can see it's active as opposed to undo, which isn't active. It's shaded gray. So again, we'll talk about that in later training video, but I want to give you a heads up. If that's something important to you, that will be cleared out anytime you save your presentation. And while we're backstage here, let's go down to advanced. And speaking of undoing mistakes, as we talked about here, when you do something and you want to undo what you did, you can hit on the back arrow. And right now the maximum number of undos you can do is 20. If you feel like you want to do more, 
you can say, wow, let's go up to 30 or 40 or 50. I'm not sure how many undos you can have available for you for PowerPoint to keep track of those actions that you did to be able to undo all of them, but you can set as many as you need to. I'm going to leave it as is, 20 is sufficient for me. And let's scroll down here. Show this number of recent presentations. So when you go backstage and you click on File, over to the right hand side, it'll list all the presentations that you've recently been working on, and it'll show up to 50. So if you want to see 50 that you recently worked on, the, all the older ones down to number 50, and it'll be available for you to click on, automatically open up that presentation. If that's way too many for you to see over on the right hand side, then you know you can go ahead and narrow that down to five. And you can see when you hover over it, change how many presentations are shown in the recent presentation list. And then finally, down below, slideshow. When you're done with the slideshow, do you want to end with a black slide to let you know that it's done? Or to help the other person who's given the presentation that you created that it's done and it just doesn't abruptly end? So right now it's going to end with a black slide. So when I click okie dokie, and here's my presentation. One slide, the title slide with nothing on it. Well, I can even type in here, nothing. <laughs> so click off. When I begin my slideshow, there you go, nothing. So when I'm done, when I click, there's the black screen that says up at the top, end of slideshow, click to exit. So that's available. But if I come up here and click on file, go down to options, and we change that, advanced, and scroll down, and we say don't end with the black slide, and I click okie dokie, and I begin my presentation, and I click it's done. There's no black screen to say, okay, I don't want you guys to see the design view here upon the projector. I want a notification before we're actually done with the presentation. Well, if you don't have all your slides memorized and know when the presentation ends or when somebody else is giving a presentation and they want a heads up when it's time to wrap things up. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.